All right, so uh, let's start off with some basics. Um, what's your name? Where are you from? Um, what kind of music would you describe like your kind of musical set as? Uh, my set? Yeah. Uh, I'm Conway. I'm a little bit from all over the place. Um, born in St. Louis, moved to Brooklyn, now live in LA, and I'm on tour, so I don't really live anywhere. Um, my musical style, depending on who you're talking to, has been described either as alternative or pop, mm -hmm. um, or sometimes even electro pop, which is hilarious because I barely have any synths in my music whatsoever. Sure. But um, basically, it's a hybrid of you know live instruments and some programmed percussion and a lot of sounds that I make with my voice. Um, some of the songs feel a little indie, right. but I think people say pop because I try to write really catchy choruses, mm -hmm. and for some reason that's pop. Yeah, that's just how it goes, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you said you were born in St. Louis, lived in New York for a while, now you're living in L.A., kind yep. of. Um, how have these, like, cities kind of shaped, like, the artists you are? Are there any, like, specific bands or artists from those cities that you kind of, like, looked up to or kind of, like, drew inspiration from? I mean, I like so many different kinds of music, so I feel like music just in general is bound to inspire me. Um, I don't model what I'm doing after any one person in particular. But I think um, for New York, uh, when I was in New York, I went to a lot of really dope hip hop shows, which I feel like um, I got to see real hip hop yeah. being done by real uh, MCs and real DJs, and that was an amazing experience. In LA, um, you know, I had a band before this solo thing, so I played every crappy place you can imagine and good places now um, in LA. So for me, Musically, that just taught me really the ropes. Like, LA has been where I've made the biggest music community, and I think that's been influential because it's made me a better musician. It's yeah. made me a working professional musician. Who are some of the artists that you've looked up to and kind of drawn? In life? Yeah, in life. And I mean, I would say I love, I love Karen Ho, for cool. sure. Leah yeah. Yaz is super rad to me. Um, you know, way back, like, when I was a kid, my mom used to play me the Talking Heads, and... I realized that that's coming out in my music more than I ever even consciously thought of. Um, obviously, David Byrne's a genius. Yeah. It's not a surprise. Um, I think also Outkast, mm -hmm. really, um, like old school hip hop Outkast, really influenced me a lot. Um, I really, I just, I really look up to people who are really great lyricists. Okay. So, like, randomly, like Nico Case. I don't know if you listen to her yeah. music. But that woman can write a tale yeah. around sure, anybody. Sure, so, yeah. um, and the Pixies, like pretty much anything the Pixies has ever That's done, really cool. is the coolest thing to me ever. I started playing bass because of Kim Deal. Like I was like, I'm gonna cool. be. Cool. Have you seen her. the Pixies? Because they've been on tour. Yeah, recently. I saw them in LA at the Palladium like a couple years ago. Wow, it's really cool. And I was, like, I'm not much of a fan. Like I love music, I'll go, but I'm not the person that waits in line. I don't get there early. I usually want to get let in. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a shit about that. <laughs> um, but the Pixies, like, I was like five years old. Like, I was up in the front yeah. screaming Kim, the entire time Kim. I had to be on Kim's side screaming Kim. Insane. Like, I mean, I'm, I don't think I've ever been a bigger fan of the Was band. it a good show? Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, you know, I wish I'd seen them back in the day when mm -hmm. they were, like, you know, really touring. Because you could yeah. tell they were kind of like, I need the money. But, um, yeah. That's cool. Um, so what are some like messages you're trying to kind of express in your music or what kind of like emotions are you drawing from? Well, um, I'm pretty opinionated about many things, so you know, that message will probably continue to evolve, but um, mostly honesty, um, freedom, self-respect, and uh, not to be scared to have an opinion, and also not to be scared to have an opinion that can be positive, because I think like you know, when I used to do music, it was like only deep or only sarcastic, and now I'm also embracing my ability to have fun and not think that that's dorky. Like, I'm super over being cool. I realize that I'm not cool, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. So, like, if I want to do a super love song or I want to do a super playful song and not take myself seriously, I'm just as bound to do that as I am to do, like, a very opinionated, sarcastic, up yours type stuff. So yeah. really just the freedom, like, I, I, if, even if people hate my music, I, I do hope that they at least realize it's real. Cool. Um, 
So you're on tour with Ellie Goulding right now. That's pretty awesome. Psycho, uh, but true. Yeah. <laughs> um, how has she kind of like helped you with your like musical career? Have you like drawn like like have you kind of like watched her and then kind of see like what she does and kind of yeah have you guys I mean, helped each other out. Um, obviously it's a gigantic opportunity to tour with her. She's having like the year of her life. I mean she's just getting like handed awards left and right. Um, she's the biggest record so far selling of 2014. She just won cool. a Brit Award. I should be her publicist. <laughs> um, so, like, playing to her fans, I mean, it's sold out shows every night. It's a lot of girls from, like, ages, like, baby to, like, their moms. Yeah. So I'm getting, like, a wide range of women, which is really rad. And um, I also am just getting exposed to brand new people. And so, like, that opportunity is probably, like, I mean, it's priceless. I mean, I've seen it already on my social media my EP sales, all that kind of stuff, and also just the love that I've been receiving, which has been really encouraging. I think as far as watching her, you know, I draw some similarities already. We're both clearly workaholics. We both, mm -hmm. um, you know, live to do this. I think seeing how she has it, you know, my team is five, her team is 45. So, yeah. like, looking at that and be like, oh, my God, like, what would I do if I had the production, yeah. the team, the trucks, the, you know, whatever, if I get to that point... Just kind of seeing how an operation that big really functions mm -hmm. and I feel like I've been taking a lot of notes and one thing I feel like I've learned from her is everybody that she has around her is positive professional good no attitudes no yeah. drama and it all moves really smooth so that I think is the biggest thing because we have quite different musical styles yeah but the business is the same right yeah cool. so that's that's probably helped you a lot with your career um so Ross here is our promoter. Um, he does does a great job promoting um, a lot of Sony artists and stuff. Yeah. Uh, how have things changed since you've been like signed on to the label? Yeah. Um, well, you know the label has been really supportive of my vision and pretty much everything I want to do, which I don't is not what you usually hear from people when they are signed to a major label. Yeah. But I came to that label with my songs already written, um, with my video that I'd already made, um, the band you know, everything I wanted, and I was like, you know, if, if you like this, yeah, this is what I want to do, and they were like, that's what we want, and I was like, great, and we're in the same place, um, there was no like, why don't you put this dress on, or like, yeah. maybe you should change it to that, because I was like, just didn't come from that place, um, but what's changed is just having the distribution, and the support, mm -hmm. and like, more people on your team to get your music out, and honestly, like, right now, especially everybody and their mom has like two and three bands and you know there's so much music the label is crucial in yeah breaking through that sea of like endless sounds yeah that's really great that they let you kind of keep your identity too that they're not trying to I, some labels well dude, i dude. mean like i wouldn't you know, i don't look right in the wrong clothes you know yeah. what i'm saying like that wouldn't work it would be an embarrassment to them as well i feel like they would if I showed up to Columbia just even wearing a dress I wasn't supposed to be wearing, they would look at me like, yeah. what are you doing at this point? Because I'm just, you know, my body projects shit that's not real. <laughs> okay. Um, so can you tell us the story of, like, one of your best shows? And then also on the flip side, maybe one of your worst shows? Yeah. Um, I had one of my best shows ever, actually, in Pomona, which was just, like, a week ago. And it was this weird turning point. My manager was there, he had come, which was cool. Um, the band was there, you know, I had a couple friends, so I'm in the, um, I'm gonna say green room loosely because mm -hmm. it's basically a balcony made into a green room for us. That's the other thing about opening on tour is you, you get whatever's left over. Yeah, I've been um, some pretty dark green rooms. <laughs> you're like, oh, you can see me changing. Um, but while we are waiting to go on, we were hearing people chanting Conway like over and over. And I kind of looked at Martin, who's my manager, and I was like, I was like, dude, are those your friends? Like, did you pay somebody? And he's like, no. And I was like, do we have guests here? I was like, living the guest list. He's like, no. I was like, oh, that's weird, yeah. Okay, blah, blah, And then they kept doing it. And then all of a sudden, they started singing the lyrics to this song called Shut Up, which mm -hmm. isn't released anywhere. It's not recorded anywhere. It's just from the shows I've been playing. Wow. And then he looked at me, and he's like, no, that's weird. I was like, that's weird. And I was like, what's up? And so literally, I peeked my head out like this, and like, five rows of people just start screaming and this is before we've gone on and I'm fully tripping out like wow I'm like this is an Ellie Goulding show there's no way they know who I am this is crazy um so obviously like 
that was a freak out slash cool. By the time I got out on stage, their energy was so crazy Did you feel that awkward? my energy was like, like through the roof. It was one of the best shows ever. Like I was literally just like pointing to people, and people started ballistically screaming and like freaking out, and, like jumping over the security guards to like grab people, and you know the energy was like. I couldn't even handle it. That's it was weird. it was really amazing. Um, not a bad show. The opposite story would be, you would think Madison Square Garden Theater, that was our first show with Ellie, was going to be like this incredible experience. We were all like, oh my god, we're going to play Madison Square Garden. It was like a huge bucket list thing. Get out, first song, sounds amazing, sold out. And then my monitor blew out. And oh, no. like literally I had no vocals. Nothing. So you couldn't hear it at all. So I was like, oh my god, this is not happening at like the best venue yeah. in New York. And I kind of casually look over at the sound guy and I'm like, you know, like mm-hmm. one of these. And he looks and he's like, no, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not good. Um, what had happened was a channel blew in his soundboard because it's a vintage board. So uh-huh. the light stayed on for him. So he was like, oh no, you're on. And I was like, I'm really not on. And he's like, no, no, you're really on. I was like, I'm really not on. Yeah, you don't want to be on so the set too much. I played the whole show without any vocal monitors. Wow. That's pretty good. Uh, just listening to the house. That's which cool. Is um, not ideal. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, are there some artists you're looking forward towards, like maybe that you want to tour with in the future sometime, or maybe like ideal, or maybe these people that you that are more close to? Who I you mean, are? I would love to tour with like a hybrid of like James Blake. Um, Frank Ocean and Karen O, if you could That's a set right make there. a little festival. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of festivals. Or All J. All J is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're playing Sunfest in California. True. Um, it's like a couple weeks away. It's a week away, right? Yeah, May 4th. Um, is this your first music festival? Have you played in some yes. before? No? This is our first, like, on the beach, full on, tent. Lots of heat, Ooh. probably passing out. Yeah. Type festival. Any other plans for like Sasquatch or maybe any other ones? Um, I don't know about that yet. We're going to the UK in June oh, cool. to do our first shows over there, and possibly like more summer stuff in Europe. I'm not totally sure, uh, because the EP is coming out in London on May fifth. All right. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been writing music, and what kind of first got you? I used to write music? songs when I was like. I, th- I, they weren't songs so much as they were like probably like freestyle rhymes just to like annoy mm-hmm. my mother with. I liked rhyming. Yeah. I would do it incessantly and then I would put it to some probably horrible melody. Um, but I always liked making things up and I always wrote. So I was always writing and then I was always singing. I just didn't really start putting them together like professionally. In the past 10 years, I, you know, obviously I've yeah. had tons of bands and, you know, had all my embarrassing first bands. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Have you been singing the whole time or do you play any other instruments? Yeah, I play bass as my main instrument, cool. um, but I also program a lot, so like a lot of the percussion and stuff that you hear on the record or whatever, maybe inspired from a crappy beat I made and play something over it. And yeah. I play a lot of other instruments really crappy, but I play bass well. Yeah. Um, I play drums crappy and I have to go and edit them because they're severely off time, they sound tight. Um, but yeah, singing and writing has always been my main thing. Cool. A um, little bit of a different question. What do you think of like pop music culture right now? So like we have big names like Lordy and Miley Cyrus on like the, the one spectrum, you know, and then you got people that are merging into like the popular culture, like London Grammar and Group Love and stuff. Uh, uh-huh. What do you think of like the whole like music genre that's kind of progressing right now? That calls itself pop. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well. I think it's a pretty narrow lane. I think um, right now, if you say pop music, you go, okay, Rihanna, Miley, um, you know, whatever, Maroon 5, whatever the 10 tracks that are incessantly played on the radio, yeah. right? Um, but to me, pop music really is meant to be popular music, which means that it reaches a wide audience, which means that a wide amount of people can relate to it. So I'm kind of hoping that we have a teeny bit more room for something just a little bit more diverse because right now I feel like what we hear as pop music in America, not necessarily in Europe, um, is pretty formulaic and mm-hmm. it's like A B A B structure and big old choruses about like 
get drunk or yeah. um, you know Saturday night or maybe even Friday night or you know whatever night you were getting drunk um, the, it's limited you know but I do think that there's room for more and I think there are smaller um, advances being made yeah but on the flip side I think there's also a lot more exposure to what's being called alternative music than mm-hmm. there ever was than there ever was yeah but a lot of that music is really popular because it's really catchy too yeah so um, I don't know. I just I hope that we just keep sort of expanding that window. Yeah. Would you kind of like to break out of like just being like indie pop and kind of like kind of dabble in different genres? Like maybe I don't really start care about titles. I want um, no. I will never start just <laughs> rapping. Um, I like music. I think a lot of people like diverse music, and just as I would have a problem as with a title as a person, I have a problem with that as a musician because my next record might be something else entirely so I'm leaving the doors open and you know just want people to listen to it I don't care if I'm categorized here or there or whatever that doesn't matter to me that's, that's somebody else's <laughs> thing not mine um so you're going on tour this summer in the UK what are some other future plans for you releasing the EP in the UK May 5th first shows in the UK in June um some more shows in New York probably in June as well Finishing the record in between, hoping to release yeah. before the end of the year, maybe September ish. Um, world domination. <laughs> uh, maybe get a haircut. No, I don't know. Like, just basically a lot of touring and finishing the record. Cool. Yeah, I think touring is definitely helping you get a lot of exposure to, to like, that's what's cool on. audiences and everything. Yeah. Um, that's about all I have. Any closing statements or thank yous? Uh, um, thank you, and thank you, Ross, for um, touching my gun so that I could spit it out and do this interview in a timely fashion. All right. <laughs>